Percy Fawcett, born on August 18, 1867 in Torquay, Devon, England, was the son of Edward Boyd Fawcett and Myra Elizabeth. His father, who had been born in India, was a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society, RGS. Fawcett later joined the Royal Military Academy, Woolwich, and became a lieutenant of the Royal Artillery in 1886. In the same year, Fawcett met his future wife, Nina Agnes Patterson, and they had two sons, Jack and Brian, as well as a daughter named Joan. Fawcett's military career included an appointment as the Duke of Cornwall's adjutant of the 1st Cornwall Artillery Volunteers in 1896 and a promotion to captain in 1897. He served in various locations, including Hong Kong, Malta, and several other locations throughout the world. Fawcett, following his father's footsteps, joined the Royal Geographical Society himself in 1901, where he pursued surveying and map-making. Subsequently, he worked for the British Secret Service in North Africa while honing his surveyor skills. Percy Fawcett's first expedition to South America took place in 1906, when he was seconded for service there on May 2, 1906. The Royal Geographical Society sent him to Brazil with the task of mapping a jungle area near the border with Bolivia as an unbiased third party. During this expedition in 1907, he made the bold claim of encountering and shooting a gigantic 62-foot anaconda, a statement that drew skepticism from the scientific community. He also reported sightings of other enigmatic creatures unknown to zoology, including a small cat-like dog similar in size to a foxhound and a giant spider named the Apazaka, which was said to have poisoned some locals. Fawcett's explorations continued with a total of seven expeditions between 1906 and 1924. He established friendly relationships with the local inhabitants through gifts, patience, and courteous behavior. In 1908, he traced the source of the Rio Verde in Brazil, and in 1910, he journeyed to the Heath River on the border between Bolivia and Peru to explore its origins. By 1911, having retired from the British Army in 1910, Fawcett returned to the Amazon with his trusted companion Henry Coston and biologist James Murray to chart unexplored jungle territory. In 1913, he made the intriguing claim of encountering dogs with double noses, possibly the double-nosed Andean tiger hounds. Fawcett's ideas about a lost city known as Z in the Mato Grosso region of Brazil began to take shape by 1914. He speculated that an advanced civilization once thrived in the Amazon, leaving behind isolated ruins. He also came across a document called Manuscript 512, believed to be written by Portuguese Bandeirante João da Silva Guimarães in 1753, describing the discovery of an ancient city with arches, a statue, and hieroglyphics, though its exact location remained elusive. This city became a secondary focus for Fawcett after Z. During the First World War, Fawcett temporarily returned to Britain and served as a reserve officer in the Royal Artillery, even commanding an artillery brigade in Flanders despite being nearly 50 years old. He received promotions and accolades during the war, including the Distinguished Service Order. Following the war, Fawcett resumed his explorations in Brazil, studying local wildlife and archaeology. In 1920, he embarked on a solo attempt to find Z, but had to abandon the mission due to illness and an unfortunate incident where he had to shoot one of his pack animals. In 1924, Percy Fawcett, backed by a London-based group known as The Glove, embarked on a return expedition to Brazil, accompanied by his eldest son Jack and Jack's close friend, Raleigh Rimmel. Their mission was to explore the Amazon and search for the elusive Z. Fawcett, a seasoned traveler, brought with him essential supplies, including canned foods, powdered milk, firearms, flares, a sextant, and a chronometer. He deliberately chose just two companions, emphasizing health, ability, and loyalty, in order to travel lightly and avoid drawing too much attention from potentially hostile native tribes. On April 20th, 1925, Fawcett's expedition set out from Cuiaba, Brazil, consisting of the three men, two Brazilian laborers, two horses, eight mules, and two dogs. Their last communication was on May 29th, when Fawcett wrote a letter to his wife, delivered by a native runner, stating their readiness to venture into uncharted territory with only Jack and Raleigh. They were reported to be crossing the Upper Xingu, a tributary of the Amazon River. Dead Horse Camp, also known as Fawcett's Camp, marked Percy Fawcett's last known location. In a letter sent from this camp, he described the challenges he and his companions had encountered, provided their coordinates, 
expressed doubts about Raleigh Rommel, and outlined his plans for the near future. Fawcett's message ended with reassuring words to his wife, You need have no fear of any failure. These poignant words would be among the last communication from the intrepid explorer, leaving an enduring mystery surrounding the fate of his ill-fated expedition in the Amazon jungle. It wasn't until January 1927, nearly two years after their last message, that the Royal Geographical Society declared Fawcett and his party lost. Subsequently, numerous volunteer expeditions were organized to locate them, but most proved unsuccessful, and some searchers even lost their lives in the attempt. Various theories circulated about the fate of Fawcett's party. Some believed that local Indian tribes, including the Kalapalos, may have been involved in their disappearance as the group encountered these tribes. However, it remains uncertain whether they were murdered or simply became lost and succumbed to natural causes in the dense Brazilian jungle. In the years following Fawcett's disappearance, some artifacts associated with his expedition were found with Indian tribes, such as a nameplate and a theodolite compass. But these discoveries did not provide conclusive answers to the mystery of what happened to Percy Fawcett, Jack, and Raleigh Rommel on their ill-fated quest for the lost city of Z. Henry Coston, who had accompanied Percy Fawcett on five of his previous expeditions, expressed doubt about the notion that Fawcett had met his end at the hands of native Indians. He believed that given Fawcett's typically good relations with these tribes, it was more likely that the explorers had succumbed to issues such as a lack of food or exhaustion. Over the years, despite various rescue expeditions, the mystery surrounding Fawcett's disappearance persisted. While there were rumors and unverified reports, the exact fate of Fawcett and his companions remained elusive. One of the earliest expeditions, led by American explorer George Miller Diet in 1927, claimed to have found evidence of Fawcett's death at the hands of the Alawik, but this account was unconvincing. Aloha Wanderwell's efforts in the 1930s, including using her seaplane to search for Fawcett, did not yield any significant results. Another expedition in 1951 reportedly discovered human bones believed to be Fawcett's, but these claims were disputed, and subsequent scientific analysis revealed they were not his remains. In 1998, English explorer Benedict Allen interviewed the Kalapalo Indians, who were said to have confessed to killing Fawcett and his party. However, an elder of the Kalapalo, Vajuvi, disputed this claim, asserting that the bones found by Villas Boas were not Fawcett's. He also denied his tribe's involvement in the explorer's disappearance, although conclusive evidence to support this statement was lacking. A story recounted by Danish explorer Arne Falk Rohn in 1991 suggested that Fawcett and his companions had a mishap on the river, lost their gifts for the Indian tribes, and continued without them, violating protocol. The Kalapalo they encountered, considering them more or less seriously ill, decided to kill them. Jack and Rommel's bodies were thrown into the river, while Fawcett received a proper burial. In 1979, Fawcett's signet ring was discovered in a pawn shop, leading to a theory that bandits had killed the expedition members and disposed of their bodies in a river while stealing their belongings. A Russian documentary released in 2003 suggested that Fawcett might have been searching for the fabled ruins of El Dorado, and that an unknown primitive tribe, isolated from modern civilization, could have been responsible for the explorer's demise. In 2004, television director Misha Williams put forward the theory, based on his study of Fawcett's private papers, that Fawcett had intended to establish a commune in the jungle, following theosophical principles and the worship of his son Jack, rather than returning to Britain. Percy Fawcett's disappearance remains one of the enduring mysteries of exploration, an unsolved riddle hidden within the depths of the Amazon rainforest. Despite numerous theories and decades of search efforts, the exact fate of Fawcett, his son Jack, and Raleigh Rommel continues to elude us. While many stories and speculations have emerged over the years, the truth behind their final expedition remains a tantalizing secret, a testament to the immense challenges and mysteries of the uncharted territories they dared to explore. In the heart of the Amazon, the legend of Percy Fawcett and his quest for the lost city of Z lives on, inviting us to ponder the ultimate destiny of the intrepid explorer and his companions amid the lush, unforgiving wilderness. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fireside Unsolved. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, take it easy and be easy, you filthy bastards.